Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be talking about the introduction to rotor dynamics. In this video, we will cover the first two topics. So we will talk about the gyroscopic moments and how to get the equations of motion for a system that looks like this. In the next videos, we will talk about the next topics. So first, let's look at our system that we are looking at or that we're having. So we have a rotating mass with rotational inertia I that is supported with springs in direction X and in direction Y. And we have a rotation speed omega. Then we have a hinge support with the length L that is fixed to a fixed point. So we can only turn around in or tilt in this direction or tilt up and down. And now we would like to find the equations of motion for a system like this. First, we have to understand the gyroscopic moments. The gyroscopic moments are very, very special because they uh, introduce moments in the other degree of freedom if we tilt around if we tilt around one degree of freedom, we will introduce moments in the other degree of freedom. So if we have a rotation Cx, so this is if we talk, if we look at this system, we have x in this direction. So if we have a positive tilt, so we go down, we will actually introduce a moment around the negative y direction, so around y. So if we just multiply that out, we will get I, Z, Z, our uh, rotational inertia, times our C, X, uh, no, sorry, our C, Y, this is our coupling, times our rotation speed omega. And the moment around Y will be minus rotational inertia around Z, times our rotational speed, times our C, X dot. Of course, don't forget the dot. So we see that the gyroscopic moments will introduce a coupling in our system so that we can't just look at the x and y direction uh, separate. Because if we move into the x direction, there will be moments that will move us in the y direction. But if we're moving in the y direction, we will again get moments that will move us in the x direction. So this is a very, very important thing that if we have those uh, gyroscopic moments, our systems is coupled. So let's look at our equations of motion. So in the first two rows, we ha will have the Newton equation. And in the second two, we will talk about more about the rotation. And this will be our Euler part. So if we just look at Newton, we have our mass. So this is the mass of our rotor. And it has a acceleration x and a acceleration in y. We have no damping, so x dot and y dot is all zero, but we have springs. So if we move into the x direction, we have a spring kx, and if we move into the y direction, we have spring ky. So the force is x times kx and y times ky. And of course, if we're talking about Newton, we also have forces. So we have a force in direction x and we have a force in direction y. But this is not all we need for our equations of motion. Let me get rid of this first. So because we want the system to stay in place, we need reaction forces. And those reaction forces act on the hinge. So if we tilt or if we move in this direction, we want it actually to rotate. And this rotation can only be done if we have those reaction forces in X and Y. So we can't forget those reaction forces. If we look just at the Euler part, we have our rotational inertia, I, and our phi double dot, uh, psi double dot, and psi y double dot. So this is x and y. Then we have this gyroscopic coupling. So we have the rotational inertia around z times our c dot in the y direction and we have our negative rotational inertia around z so this is this rotation around the z axis multiplied by c dot x and 
for the angles, we have just Cx and C dot, but we have no damping, so we have nothing to do here. Then, of course, if we had those rotational forces, we have now, of course, uh, the reaction forces, we now have moments. So if we have a moment arm, we will have forces acting here, and they will create a moment around X and around Y. So we will have additional moments. Now we need to understand, let's get rid of this. Now we, we have to understand that our forces, or so I'm sorry, that our displacements, X and Y, and our angles, Cx and Cy, are not independent. So we have, this is our length L, this is our C, and this is our displacement in X. So we know that X is equal to sine C times L. But we assume small angles for now, so C can just be dropped, and we left with X is C times L. And now we can put this relation into a matrix and get rid of our Cs and just left with our Xs. So X, uh, 1 times X is X, 1 times Y is Y, and then we have Y times our minus 1L, this will be our C, and then we have 1 over L times X, and this will be our Cy. So we have some kind of projection matrix that will get rid of the coupling between X and C, or X and Y and Cx and Cy. Now that we have this one, or this projection matrix that we call L, we can use the same matrix to get rid of the reaction forces, because right now we have, we had uh, six unknowns. So we had X and Y, C, C, and reaction force in X and reaction force in Y. But if we use this projection matrix as some kind of principle of virtual work, we can get rid of the reaction forces. So if we have our mass matrix that we had before and pre-multiply it with L transposed times the, ma the mass matrix that we had before, so this is this one right here, and post-multiply it with L to get rid of the uh, X and Cs, or, and just left with the Cs, we will get a two by two matrix. The same for the gyroscopic matrix, we pre-multiply with L transposed and post-multiply first to get rid of the coupling between Cs and the displacements, and then to get rid of the reaction forces. And we will get a coupled gyroscopic matrix. We do the same one for the stiffness matrix, and we will get just X, uh, Kx and Ky. Our degrees of freedom now, because we eliminated our Cs, are just X and Y. And of course, we also have the forces that were applied to our system. So now that we went from a 4x4 matrix, we are now just left with a mass matrix, a gyroscopic matrix, and a stiffness matrix. And of course, a force that is acting in X and Y direction. So with the help of these, or this equation, this is our equation of motion, or better, two equations of motion that we can work with. And from the last videos, we know that we now can calculate eigenmodes, eigenfrequencies, and see how the system behaves when we change, for example, the rotation speed, because G, our gyroscopic matrix, is dependent on our rotation speed. So this will already give you a hint that our eigenvalues are dependent on the rotation speed. So at a certain rotation speed, we will hit resonance at other frequencies, but more on that in the next videos. So I hope this video gave you a better understanding or a basic introduction into the topic of rotor dynamics, how we worked with our gyroscopic moments when we had the Newton and Euler equations, how we projected them to get rid of our coupling between X and Cx and Y and Cy, of course, and then we did a pre-multiplication to get rid of our reaction forces. And now we are left with those two, uh, three matrices, our generalized coordinates Q, and of course the force that is known. So now that is left is take those equations, 
and solve them. But this will be done in the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much and see you next time.